Yes guys and welcome back guys to a brand new video guys on my channel guys and yes guys it's that time of season yet again predicting my 23-24 Premier League predictions guys for this season and you know what I've probably got a little bit of explaining to do as well of why I didn't react to my 22-23 Premier League predictions and obviously it's just due to the fact that I did film that video it was all my fault to be honest why I did not release that video and then by the time I was going to release that video the new season was coming around so I did not bother putting that video up but also due to the fact that this year for, for me and my family has been a bit of a I'm going to keep my private life to myself but it's just been very turbulent at the minute just had to take some time away clear my head went on holiday but we're back guys, back on the YouTube grind. Yes guys, I'm going to be doing my Premier League 23-24 predictions guys. I'm going to be predicting my top four, who's going to be getting relegated, my top eight. And who will be the first manager to get sacked of this Premier League season as well. And this Premier League campaign as well. Looking forward to this season guys, it's only just around the corner. It starts on Friday night, obviously by the time this video goes up, the first game would have been played. Looking forward to this season guys, and you know what, I am buzzing about it. But anyway guys, start. Starting from 20th to 1st guys, rock bottom for me, 20th is going to be Luton Town for me. The reason why I've gone with Luton Town is because, you know, Luton have come up from the Championship. Obviously, well done to Rob Edwards of bringing them up. It's tough to come from the Championship to coming up to the Premier League. I just don't think they'll be ready for the Premier League, unfortunately. Brilliant achievement for them to come up to the Premier League. I think it's the first time in their history I think they've come up. I think I'm not too sure about that one. I think Luton, I think they'll struggle this season. I think you want to try and make your home ground a fortress, make teams go there, make it hard. But I think Luton, I think just due to the fact that I don't think they'll be able to compete with the big boys, I think it's going to be tough for them to keep up this season. At the end of the day, they have made some decent signings along the way. Unfortunately, I just don't know that club, so I can't really tell you of an insight of what to expect from Luton this season. They have made only one signing that I really know, and that's Heath Chonk from Birmingham. So brought in the camper as well as a defensive midfielder from Aston. Villa, they've made that as a permanent as well but they've also brought in five other signings as well which is positive signs but to be honest I just don't think Luton Town are going to get out of that relegation zone I do think they're going to have a hard time this season in the Premier League sorry Luton fans you're going straight back to the Championship sorry about that coming 19th is Sheffield United for me I just yet again not convinced when the last time came up Sheffield United they had second syndrome season they really struggled I think you saw it strikers like Ollie McBurley really score 20 odd goals this season up top they've got Ryan Brewster as well I think they're going to have a real tough time against Sheffield United I think it's going to be tough for Paul Hagenbottom to really do them well some people think that Sheffield might do okay this season and might avoid relegation but for me I just don't think they'll have enough unfortunately they've lost Elliman Adai as well unfortunately one of their best players there as well at the club but they have brought in some players in at the end of the day they've brought in Benny Traore from BK Hacken they've also brought in three other signings as well just don't think they've done enough going to be selling Sander Burge as well off to Burley but they are bringing in a new placement in as we're speaking right now Sheffield United I just don't think I don't think they'll have it unfortunately this season unfortunately coming 18th and who will probably just miss out I'm going with Nottingham Forest I think well done to Nottingham Forest of staying up last season big achievement to stay up finish 16th the reason why I put them going down I think is just due to the fact that I think they'll suffer with second syndrome season yes last time they did bring in 30 odd players in and yes they might have gone away and had a bit of a pre-season yes they've got rid of loads of crappy players but at the end of the day I just don't think they've got enough I think you look at the players like up top like Ione as well got firing towards the end of the season I just don't see him you can score goals but you can't score loads of goals Manuel Dennis is another one I don't think he could score many goals didn't really score many goals last season I think obviously signing Chris Wood as a parent as well from Newcastle. Yet again, I think with Chris Wood and also Awarely as well, I think they're just two strikers that may probably not struggle to score goals. I think they will score goals, but maybe about 10 goals between them. I just don't think it will be enough for them to stop, unfortunately. Sorry, Forest fans, but I just think you're going to go straight back down to the Championship, unfortunately. Coming 17th and just surviving is Wolves for me. Now, obviously, big news coming out tonight as well. Obviously, Julian Lopetegui has left Wolves. He parted ways now, unfortunately. Unfortunately, due to the fact that Batugi was just not happy. There was lack of signings from Wolves. Wolves, I think you should be worried because you've got rid of Neves, you've got rid of Montenegro, you've released Diogo Costa, you've sold Raw Jimenez, Fulham. Where are these signings? You might be struggling to, to stay in the rules, but you've got to bring your 
signings in and that squad is thinning at the minute. I think we could be on the cusp of going down and I think they could be a team that could definitely go down this season as well. I think we could get what they deserve at the end of the day here, Wolves. The board will definitely will pay a price to this. Seems like Gary O'Neill's going to be appointed tomorrow as well. Wolves, not much. The summer transfer window, they've brought in Triari from Mets as well. And obviously the return of Matt Doherty as well from Atletico Madrid. Wolves, I don't know, could be touch and go here for Wolves. I think they could be in real trouble this season. Obviously, could be tipped to go down as well. Coming 16 for me is Everton. I just think Everton are just not where they are at the minute, unfortunately. They're going to be going into their new stadium as well. I think that could maybe not help them as well due to the fact that you saw it with what happened with West Ham when they moved to their new stadium and they really struggled as well. I think with Everton, yet again, they just need a lot of signings. They just need major surgery at that club, to be honest. Obviously, they need to get rid of the board as well. Bigger things to worry about. Obviously, they have brought in some signings in. Obviously, Danji was coming as well from Villarreal. Uncertain to see whether if he was going to go to Everton in the January transfer window, but that was due to the fact that, obviously, because of what was going to be going on with the new manager situation as well. Danji was gone in. Not really a statement signing, to be honest, I wouldn't say, but obviously, they brought in a little bit of experience now with Ashley on going in. Yeah, bringing in a new striker in for a backup for Dominic Carver Lewin who who is always injured as well. I think he's another one that needs to go unfortunately. They need another centre back, you know, to replace Yerry Mina. I think they need another goalkeeper, but I still think it's not enough for at least players that they've not replaced. They need to revitalise themselves. They can't be battling at the bottom. They will yet again unfortunately. I just don't think they'll have enough. Coming 15th for me and maybe just doing enough. I think could be Bournemouth this season. They've appointed a new manager. A surprising get rid of Gary O'Neill who could be going off to Wolves. They brought in a, a new manager in. Adoni Raiola as well. A new manager that's coming in with a new identity. With new ideas. New tactics at Bournemouth. I think Bournemouth might do okay this season. I think they might be alright yet again. Bournemouth, I think, they've brought in a new manager in. He's going to come in with a new style of play. I think the fans really need to get behind it as well. Maybe in another team that could be on the cusp of going down if it backfires as well. At the end of the day, I think they've got to trust it, give him time as well, but they have brought in the likes of Justin Cliver, Roman Crave as well, if that's how you say it. Ahmed Traore as well. The building, young players coming in as well. It's not too bad for Bournemouth and they've brought another two more signings in. At the end of the day, if we give the new manager time, want to try and make it tough to go to the vitality this season as well. Coming 14 for me, I think it could be West Ham. Obviously, they've lost their best player in Declan Rice. That's gone off to Arsenal for £105 million. But they are bringing in somebody, as we're speaking right now as well. Edson Alvarez is coming in for them. He's a Pretty much a, a DM and also a centre back, but really needs to be as a more of a DM for me. West Ham as well. They need to build on it, build on the money that they've got for Declan Rice. I go and spend it wisely now, West Ham. You don't want to be going out spending stupid money for stupid players. Spend it wisely. That's what West Ham have definitely got to do. Coming 13th, I've gone with Burnley. Now, obviously, Burnley have come in up from the Championship as well. Obviously, Burnley won the league in the Championship and they've come up as well. I think this is a team that could surprise some people this season. I do believe that they could stay up as well. And I'll tell you why. Because I think Burnley, not only just because of the league last year, well done to Vincent Company and his staff as well to bring them back up. Fantastic achievement. Not easy in the championship, but well done, Burnley. Incredibly well to come back every league. But I think Burnley, because I think, you know, they're building a young sort of team, a young, hungry sort of team that he can trust in. Vincent Company, he's been busy in the transfer window as well, trying to bring in some new faces in as well. Obviously, got rid of a couple of players that he didn't want as well. Now, obviously, Burnley are trying to really build a proper good team now as well. Speaking right now, they're getting a new DM in Sander Burge as well. They've also signed James Trafford. They've brought in seven other signings in as well. So, they're really building Burnley. I think Burnley could have an OK season back to the Premier League. They'll be looking to build on it. I think Burnley, they want to try making turf more. A bit of a fortress. Make it difficult for teams to go there and win. I think Burnley could have a decent season back to the Premiership. Get a couple of wins on the road. Win most of the games at home. I think they could do okay this season, Burnley. Coming 12th for me, I've gone with Crystal Palace. We know that Roy Hodgson has obviously signed a contract to stay as their manager. He could have gone another way of maybe go for a young manager. But they wanted to go in with more experience with Roy Hodgson. I think Roy Hodgson had an incredible back end of the season. When he came in to replace Patrick Vieira, Crystal Palace have lost their probably 
probably their best player, Wilfred Zaha. They've not really replaced him, but they do need to replace him. So they need to go out there and get a winger, which they need to do. But they have done some smart signings. I think by bringing in Jefferson Lemmer that can come in as a DM, can walk into that midfield as well. And also a young Brazilian, I think, uh, called Franca, never a creative midfielder as well. Two decent signings for Crystal Palace, but they want to build on it. They want to get another winger as well for losing Wolverine Zaha. I think Palace could have another okay season, decent season under Roy Hodgson. And the way how he plays, brilliant football. And I think Palace want to keep that up as well. The season as well, and want to build on it and hopefully try and challenge in the next couple of years as well. Coming 11th for me is Fulham. I think they might have a, a bit of a drop off this season I think Fulham I think obviously they finished I think 9th or something 9th or 10th I think Fulham not sure where they finished last season I think they'll do okay yeah again there's been rumours that Djokovic could be could go off to Saudi Arabia but they've obviously had to act really go with the summer transfer window and go and get a new striker for Jimenez a smart signing to do for them and obviously bringing in Calvin Bassey as well from Ajax two decent signings for Fulham and obviously there was rumours that potentially Marco Silva could have gone off to Saudi as well himself He's decided to stay. I think they could have an okay season. Maybe a bit of a drop off this season. I think they could do okay though, Fulham as well. Bit of a surprise one from last season. I think many people thought they were going to go down, prove people wrong, and I think they'll stay up yet yeah, again, Fulham. They're another team now that could definitely stay up, foreseeable for sure. Coming 10th is Brentford. Brentford for the last two seasons have shocked me, surprised me in a way, because I think Brentford, they've done really well i think they've really stuck to their tasks got a brilliant manager in thomas frank i had their doubts as well over brentford as well over the first two seasons tipping going down twice as well i think obviously brentford are another team that are here to stay foreseeable as well so i think brentford have that winning mentality to be at the top to challenge the big teams as well and they know that they've got a team to do it as well a strong mentality they like to go to war, take the games to some good teams out there. I think Thomas Frank's done an, an amazing job there at the minute. Keep it going, I think they'll have another decent season being 10th. They've brought in Nathan Collins in from Wolves. A new goalkeeper, obviously, with David Ryan going off to Arsenal now as well. A new keeper comes in, Mark Falcon, is that how you say it? A smart move of keeping Kevin Scherner as opponent as well. A new strike is needed, obviously, with losing Ivan Tony on his ban as well. I think they do really need a new striker. It's unfortunate for Brentford will do well yet again this season. Or push on and do well this season for sure. Coin light for me, Brighton. Now, obviously, Brighton, a little bit of a fall off from Brighton this season. I do sense that because due to the fact that of a distraction in the way this season, being in the Europa League, I think that could be a bit of a distraction. Obviously, playing Thursday nights and then playing on Sundays as well and playing every three days as well. It'll be a new thing for them, definitely. It could be a bit of a new thing for them as well. So I think there could be a little bit of a fall off for Brighton this season. Playing on Thursday nights, I do think Brighton could fall off a little bit this season. Obviously, they have gone out there, done a couple of good signings as well. They've brought in the likes of James Milner from Liverpool, a new goalkeeper at Verbruggen, say his name. Obviously, Manchester United were linked with him as well. Dahoud as well, another decent signing for them. They've gone out there and they've also pulled in the likes of Jao Pedro from Watford. They are building yet again Brighton. I just do think Europa League could be a bit of a distraction for them this season as well. Coming eight for me is Newcastle. Yet again, another team that's going to have Champions League for next season. I do believe there could be a bit of a fall off for Newcastle this season with the distraction of Champions League this season. Obviously, it's the first time in 23 years as well. It could be a bit of a distraction with them playing on Tuesday and Wednesday and nights, you know, playing on the mixture of Saturdays and Sundays. Obviously, their team could get a little bit tired during the weekends as well because it'll be a new thing for them. I think it could be a bit of a distraction for them to have having Champions League trying to challenge with the big teams out there in Europe as well the likes of Real Madrid Barcelona's Borussia Dortmund's I think it could play on them this season Newcastle I think there could be a bit of a drop off this season but they have done some decent signings brought the likes of Tanali Achilles to be given time I don't think he's going to hit it off right away unfortunately Harvey Barnes as well don't think he had a great season last year but at least to get revitalised this season at Newcastle Lee Romento as well just signed as well from Southampton as well they've done some good business Newcastle they're showing the money yet again the Saudi money I don't think they have it this season in terms of getting Europe and I think they might miss out but coming seventh for me another team that could be one to look out for as well is Aston Villa for me but they'll come seventh this season I think just due to the fact that you saw glimpses last season of how good Unai Emery is he came in at a time where they were down and out he had to pick them up through the relegation zone got them into a Europa Conference League spot as well they're going on a Europe 
days as well. Something fans that can look forward to as well this season. They need the squad depth as well. How good is this? They lost Diogo Carlos for the majority of last season due to an unfortunate injury, but now they've brought in Paul Torres. And they've got Tyrone Mings there as well. He's cooking. He's cooking something really good there at I am really. They've got a proper good manager in now that's going to be building. He's brought in some fantastic signings that wants to make a change as well. Also brought in Musa Diaby as well that can bring a lot of pace. Add to their depth for attackers as well. And also Yuri Tillemans as well. Smart signing as well to make as well. Aston Villa could be ones to look out for again. Yet again this season for sure. Coming sick for me is Tottenham. Now obviously they appointed a new manager in Ange Postanagu from Celtic as well. When I first heard about this new manager I wasn't too sure. Definitely will fall into their ways Tottenham. Yet again I think Tottenham. Yet again I think they have done some good business though. Tottenham have done alright but they need more. I do think fall into their Spursy ways. I think they've got a long way to go. Will they win a trophy? don't think so but they need to really get into the mix I think the way how Ange plays is very good very attacking as well very proactive on the front foot as well wants to play attractive football but they'll fall into their Spursy ways unfortunately and this is why I do think they'll come sixth but I think they will get Europa League I think they'll do okay but fall into their Spursy ways unfortunately keeping Harry Kane is going to be a big must as well looking at this team right now what is bringing in Ange as well with bringing in the likes of James Madison as well Manor Solomon as well, who was at Fulham on loan and obviously brought in a new goalkeeper as well. Obviously looking like Hugo Lloris is out the door as well. Vicario, is that how he says his name? They've also just signed a new centre-back in Mickey van der Ven. So they've brought in a new centre-back, but yet again they need more. And they've also just brought in a new striker and as a backup for Harry Kane as well. They've done okay top them in the transfer window, but they need more. But they need to add for sure. But obviously, yet again, I do think they'll fall into their Spursy ways, unfortunately. Coming fifth, I predicted Chelsea. I think for the first time in a long time, they've got the manager spot on. Bang on, right. Bringing in Mauricio Pochettino is a, a brilliant appointment. It's somebody that they need. Obviously, Pochettino's going to get Chelsea back up there for sure. I think you're going to see a massive jump from Chelsea. Obviously finishing 12th. Had an embarrassing season. Brought in three managers in last season. Was classed as an embarrassing season for them. So I think Potocino will definitely get them back up there. Challenging. Not challenging for the Premier League but definitely try and push for Champions League for sure. And they do have the squad to do it. Do you expect Chelsea to do something good as well this season under Mauricio Pochettino. Brought in some good signings in as well. Smart ones as well. They've gone out there. Needed to get a new centre-back for the injured for Fala. They brought in Axel Diassi from Monaco. Very good signing there. They brought in Nicholas Jackson as well. A very good winger or attacker or whatever he is to link up with Mudrick as well. And they've also got the likes of Nkuku as well. Unfortunately, to get an injury, he's going to miss out at the start of the season. And they've also brought in a backup goalkeeper for Kevin as well Robert Sanchez as well they've done okay Chelsea but they need more yet again they've got rid of a lot of shit that they need to ship out brought in some very good signings in that they can really build on obviously talks of maybe Vlajevic coming in as a striker as well I think the striker situation could be resolved in the next couple of weeks as well so that would be one to look out for as well Chelsea fans now obviously getting into the top four who is Getting into the top four for me. Now, coming four for me to Arsenal. Many of you guys will be saying, Brett, why have you put Arsenal fourth? We've just won the Community Shield and we've brought in three brilliant signings in. Why are you putting us fourth? The thing is, with Arsenal, I've put them fourth because they had a good season last year, but they threw it away. They were challenging last season with Mad City, but they bottled it. They gave it away. They threw it away. I don't think they'll come close of getting a, to a title challenge now for the next couple of years now unfortunately they've got the squad to do it they've got a fantastic squad now I think without a doubt Arsenal have got to get top four anything below top four will be a failure for them they've got to win a trophy as well with the team that they've got now they've got to win a trophy if they don't there's going to be some serious doubts over Mikel Arteta's job if he doesn't win a trophy this season doesn't get top four you have to think long and hard what they're going to do about this guy being in charge because he's not won a trophy because he's spent a lot of money and he's built on this squad you'd expect Expect them to win a trophy this season, but if they don't, there's got to be some serious doubts over Mikel Arteta for sure. They'd have to really think about it long and hard if they don't get top four. But they have brought in the main man, Declan Rice. So being a Manchester United fan, I would have loved him by United, but obviously they brought in the likes of Kai Havertz. I don't think he'll do well there, Kai Havertz. I don't think he's a striker. He's not a backup for Jesus as well. And any big player that gets injured for them, it could go to shit as well. I think if a Saka or a Jesus or a Declan Rice or whoever gets injured, will have a big on a knock-on effect for them as well. And also bring in Yuri and Timber from Ajax as well. Brilliant silence there. Took 
two of our targets. I do think Arsenal will finish fourth. I do think they will fall into their ways as well. We don't really have that much experience, but obviously trusting a lot of young players now as well. Let's see how Arsenal get on this season for sure. Going through for me, and I think they are rebuilding, and I just don't think they'll have enough, unfortunately, is Liverpool. I think Liverpool, because they have brought in two decent signings, needed to revitalise that midfield. The midfield last season wasn't good enough. We got rid of Kane to Henderson. We got rid of Milner as well. We got rid of Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. But they need more, unfortunately. They brought in two signings in Alexis McAllister. I think it's going to take him time to adapt to the way how Jürgen Klopp wants to play. Another midfielder in Sabersly as well. But maybe he's going to be trusting a lot in some of these youngsters, the likes of Harvey Elliott and also Curtis Jones in the midfield as well. But I think they need more though. I think they need another one or two more signings in the midfield to really revitalise that midfield. And it's been the priority for them this summer transfer window to get that midfield right for this season as well. I do think Liverpool just fall short. Darwin Nunes needs to have a better season. You look at their front three that they could play with this season, the likes of Salah, Jota, Diaz, Nunes. A lot of strength and depth going forward They're in the Europa League this season as well. I think playing every three days could play on them a little bit as well. So the team could get a little bit tired as well, playing on a Sundays as well. But you'd expect a team like Liverpool to go and win the Europa League as well. With the team that they've got, they should go and win the Europa League. That would automatically get them back into the Champions League anyway. Coming second for me is Manchester United, my team. I do think, I think the likes of us and Liverpool could be challenging and Arsenal as well. Could be close, but I do expect Manchester United to yet again get top four. I think we've got to be one of those there to be challenging, fighting all the way to the end. Can't give up. I do believe that they are going through a transitional period as well. Ted Hogg's brought in some brilliant signings in and to really transform this team as well. We're trying to get rid of the dead word as well with the likes of Maguire but Tom and I hopefully getting out the door try getting money out of the likes of Dean Henderson and Eric Bailly as well. Free up some money so we can go out and get a new centre back, a new midfielder hopefully in Sofran or Barat and hopefully go and get another midfielder if we can because obviously Donny van der Beek's going to be going and Fred's going to be going. So we should get the money for these players and we should go out there and splash the cash and a couple of good players now window slam shut but we have brought in some some decent signings in and some very exciting signings that have come in the door as well the likes of Mason Mount he's probably wanted a player like Mason Mount for a long time he's won the Young Player Award twice Mason Mount link up really well with the likes of Bruno Fernandes and Ericsson as well give us that good balance of the midfield and it'll be something probably lacked in the midfield for some time as well Mason Mount could be the guy that he's been wanted for as well he's also brought in Andre Nana as well obviously the departed Daradea has gone now. A new goalkeeper has come in, Andre Nana, new style of play, new dimension that we have to get used to now. Another player that he can give a lot of trust in as well, who he's worked with before at Ajax as well. An exciting signing. Obviously, he's not going to be involved in the first couple of games. He is currently injured, but he is training. Rasmus Hoyland as well, looking forward to this new striker as well. Going to be hungry. Could be a bit of a slow start for Hoyland, but when he gets firing, starts scoring the goals, he'll be firing. I think those goals will be going in for fun then. I think he's going to be a fan favourite straight away for everyone. So I think Hoyland's going to be firing. And you look at our front three that you can play with as well. The likes of Rashford, Sancho, Anthony as well. Hoyland in there as well with a mix. And obviously Marshall being in there. So there's something to play with there. With our front three as well. I think we'll try challenge this season, but I think we'll just fall short, unfortunately. Curry first and will be champions yet again will be Man City for me I think they've got just too much for everyone at the minute I think obviously Man City will definitely win the league they might have lost the Community Shield three times in a row at the end of the day City brilliant at the minute they might have lost Gundogan at the summer going and replaced him in Kovacic but Kovacic is not as good as Gundogan it could be a bit of a, a big missing Gundogan depends on how he could really balance that midfield as well Pep Guardiola as well he brought in a new centre-back in Garvadol as well a left-sided centre-back as well smart signing yet again to build on the Bad City but maybe looking like a port might let go as well that's why Garvadol's come in as a new signing for Man City Man City will become champions that's who I believe in how the table could finish let's see for back to this video at the end of the season let's hope i do well hope you guys are enjoying the video be sure to leave a like subscribe to my channel for what i know and i'll see you guys in the video in the next couple of days and peace